Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the AMD Ryzen 3 8300GE. It's a socket AM5 CPU and just like the 8500G and 8700G that we've tested before, it has integrated graphics. I've been looking for one of these for ages. Actually I was looking for an 8300G non-E but this will have to do. It seems both the 8300G and GE are limited to OEM channels because I've never even seen either so much as listed on retail sites here in the UK. The 8300GE is a lower power version of the standard chip with a default TDP of 35 watts instead of 65. It'll consume a little more than 40 watts in intensive situations like gaming. We're likely seeing less performance than we would be with the standard 8300G but we can fix this. The 8300GE would probably normally be found atop a basic feature limited OEM motherboard but if we go into the rather extensive BIOS of my ASUS AM5 board here, we can actually override the 35 watt power setting. All we need to do is find the system configuration option and change it from auto to 65 watt mode. This change will be reflected in CPU monitoring programs like CPU Z, for example. Although I was only seeing an increase of around 10 watts under load, this was enough to allow the integrated 740M graphics to reach the maximum 2600 MHz boost clock, leading to a pretty big difference in games. Here are a few comparisons between the CPU in auto mode and 65 watt mode when using the integrated graphics. I'll keep this power configuration moving forward, so let's expand on the gameplay capabilities of the 8300GE and 740M iGPU. Now this is a 4 core 8 thread processor but that's not of particular concern with no discrete graphics card in the system as the iGPU will be the primary limitation. I've got this thing paired with 32 gigs of 6400 MHz DDR5. So if we take a quick look at some iGPU benchmarks here, Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with the lowest settings, hit 101 FPS with a 1% low of 65 and a 0.1% low of 58. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 at 1080p with the lowest settings and FSL 3.1 balanced mode hit at least 40 FPS with 42 on average, a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 35. I felt that in situations where I couldn't hit 60, 40 was a nice compromise. In GTA 5 Enhanced Edition, with the minimum preset and FSL 3 enabled and set to quality, we saw 59 FPS. A bit annoying, but we did see at least 60 a lot of the time. The 1% low was 49 and the 0.1% low was 46. For Helldivers 2 with the lowest settings and the render scale option set to quality, we saw 44 frames per second, a 1% low of 41 and a 0.1% low of 40. A very consistent result as always for Helldivers 2 here. In Cyberpunk 2077, with the lowest settings and FSR 3 set to quality, we saw 40 frames per second, although performance was a bit all over the place, and I think we're also running into some CPU limitations here, because those 1.1% figures weren't very good at all at 25 and 13. To finalise, we'll look at Red Dead Redemption 2, which at 1080p with the ultra textures, probably a bit over the top, and everything else set to lowest, with FSR 2 set to performance mode, we saw 30 frames per second, 40 FPS meant way too much of a visual compromise, and 60 FPS was out of the question, but we just about scraped by with 30 frames per second though, the percentile lows once again leave a little to be desired, but it's not bad considering the specs we're working with here. But don't go looking for an 8300G just yet, especially if you want to pair it with a graphics card. Just like the 8500G we tested before, the 8300 here only has a total of 14 PCIe lanes. This means that when we add a graphics card, let's say the 9060 XT for example, it'll only have access to 4 PCIe lanes and will therefore be running in PCIe X4 mode. On a positive note, this probably won't have as much of an impact with a card like the 9060 XT or lower. And with this, we're sort of at the upper end of what I'd suggest pairing with an 8300 GE anyway. This is a quad core CPU after all, which in itself will cause problems in certain CPU intensive scenarios. That said, this thing put up one hell of a fight. 
Let's move on to some discrete graphics card testing at 1440p with the 9060 XT. Counter-Strike 2 with the high preset and 4x MSAA saw 128 frames per second with a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 62. So I think there was a little bit of a CPU limitation going on here even at this high resolution but it was more than playable with the settings. For GTA 5 Enhanced with the very high RT preset and FSL 4 set to native anti-aliasing, we saw 75 frames per second with a 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 57, so a pretty consistent experience for this one. Helldivers 2 once again, this time with the higher preset for 73 frames per second, a 1% low of 63 and a 0.1% low of 59. Again, it's a very consistent result for this game, and Helldivers 2 often runs nice and smoothly on a wide range of my tested hardware. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 then at 1440p with a higher preset and SMAA 2TX. We saw 77 frames per second here with a 1% low of 66 and a 0.1% low of 63. So again, nice and consistent. And in this one, you're going to see the GPU hitting its maximum potential really over 95% utilization pretty much all of the time. And you may have noticed the same in GTA 5 as well as Helldivers 2. Cyberpunk 2077 on the other hand, uh, this is definitely a more CPU intensive title because with the high crowds enabled as well, we saw 62 frames per second on average which is fine, but the 1% low dropped to 38 FPS and the 0.1% low was 30 which indicates a few dips and drops here which we could definitely feel in those more populated areas. Driving through some of the busier parts of Night City meant a less than smooth experience to say the least and you can probably pick that up from the on-screen gameplay footage. We'll finalise with Red Dead Redemption 2 with the ultra textures once again, this time using hardware that's more suited to it. We also set everything else to high as well as TAA which was set to high. This was for an average of 94 frames per second, the 1% low was 69, nice, and the 0.1% low was 55. Now for the most part this game ran fine but as we got into busier areas like Valentine, San Denis for example, the CPU usage is going to shoot up towards 85-90% and that means that our graphics card is going to be more limited and therefore our performance will drop a little bit and this is something you can probably pick up on video but really not a bad effort from this quad core uh, 8 threaded chip to be honest. And there we have it. The 8300 GE is probably among the best quad-core processors you can buy in 2025. Not that this is a particularly exciting accolade and you probably can't buy it. So maybe just ignore what I just said. I have had fun with it though. The uh, 740M graphics are definitely suitable for older or less demanding games uh, like CS2. Probably the original version of GTA 5 as well. The legacy version of the game makes a lot more sense than the enhanced version. But I had this installed, I didn't have room for both, so I just thought we'll stick with it and see how well it copes. And I don't think it did too badly, to be honest, especially once we had uh, unlocked the power potential of the 8300 GE. This CPU will also pair pretty well with an entry-level or mid-range GPU, despite its setbacks, namely its PCIe-related setbacks. So if you do happen across one of these or you find one cheap and you want to buy it, then... You could probably pair it with something well, like the 9060 XT and have a decent experience in a lot of games, but there will be some instances, as you saw, whereby this won't be the case. I think an older, weaker GPU would make more sense. 4060, something like that, 3050, 3060, something along those lines, maybe a 6600 XT. But I'd forget about a quad core if you want to play the latest and greatest games in 2025, that is. Nonetheless, I'm just glad to have finally found one of these and uh, been able to test it out too. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to, of course. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.